Thank you. First up, um, my name is Kun Jacobs. Um, I'm a developer at Radish Concepts, and uh, we try to make fun products, products that are not only fun for you to use, but also fun for us to develop. Um, I'm going to start my presentation with a little bit of background, what I've been going through in the last uh, almost two years now, so you will understand where my vision for WordPress and Composer is coming from. Because um, I think a lot of you in the, in the audience probably know that I quit doing full-time WordPress work about a year ago. And as it happens, outside of the WordPress bubble, fun stuff happens as well. Um, I've been doing full-time work, I, I did full-time WordPress work for about 10 years. I've been using WordPress when it still didn't have teams or plugins. Um, and while doing WordPress work is great, I like to change of pace to do something different. I wanted to do more programming languages, other frameworks, just do something non-WordPress for a little while. And I've learned over the past year that this helps my WordPress work itself as well. One of the cool things that I've discovered, and if I had listened to Rast, where is he? There is he. I would have discovered Composer a long time ago already. Um, Composer is a tool for dependency management in PHP. It allows you to declare the libraries your project depends on, and it will manage them for you. What it basically means is if someone releases a PHP library, also called a package, on the internet, you can load it with Composer, tell it what version you want, or at least it's probably using semantic versioning, so you, you give it a version constraint. Um, and then Composer will load it in for you and update it for you if you tell it to. It also loads the dependencies of your dependencies and the dependencies of your dependencies' dependencies, and so on. So if you make it really complex, it'll take Composer a little while to figure out what dependencies you need, but you'll get, if it can do it, it you will get a nice set of PHP libraries. And it also offers a powerful outer loader. It's inspired by NPM and Bundler. If you use other programming languages, like Node, for example, you might have used that as well. And uh, Jordi Borgiano has made this um, composer, and it's one of the, uh, if not the most used PHP package manager. All right, but how does it now actually work? We're going to start with outer loading. Does this look familiar to anyone here? Do you do this? It works. Nothing wrong with it. It's a bit boring and a bit maintenance heavy, but it works. With Composer, this is the most commonly used way to do it with WordPress plugins, because PSR4 is far more elegant to look at. You just define the namespace and then the map where your files live. But since it's a namespace, it requires PHP 5.3. And we all know that WordPress is still compatible with PHP 5.2. But you can also use it for just a class map. You define where your classes live, and then Composer will figure out what class lives in what file. You no longer have to define, well, I now want to use the class post, for example. Now I need to include the file where that class lives. No, you can just fire a new post in your code, and the Composer Auto Loader will figure out which, which file it needs to include for you to use that class. And then in your code, you just require the autoload.php file in the vendor directory. That's where all the magic happens. And it does this for dependencies as well. If you have a dependency that loads a class, that class will be added to the auto loader of your project as well if you load the dependency via Composer. The autoloader is, by default, is for PHP 5.3, but you can make it compatible with 5.2 as well, using a separate package that gives you the vendor, um, the vendor autoload underscore 5.2.php file, which is obviously not able to process PSR4 autoloading, because that uses namespaces. But if you want to use it in a WordPress plugin, Use this 
uh, this package as well, and you can use it in your WordPress plugins. And now comes a bold statement. If you have more than one file, please do this. Seriously, it saves you so much time in the long run. All right, nothing but love so far, but trust me. On to the meat of Composer. Say you have a fancy library. You made a package, a PHP package, I don't know what, a database connector, it can be anything. And you want to use it in multiple plugins. So you split it up from one plugin, and you want to include it in plugin B. For example, let's have a look at a premium plugin updater. Every major premium plugin vendor has one that they can use to update their plugins with if they're not in the WordPress.org repository. You just add it to composer.json and you run composer install. And then this package will be added to the vendor directory and it will be added to your autoloader as well. Life is great. You don't have to worry about it. It gets added to your autoloader. You can use it in your code until one day, in this case actually two days ago, dependency hell occurs. This is an issue that was reported in one of my libraries, conflict between plugins. If you maintain a package like this, this is your worst nightmare. It was reported at 3 a.m. in my time zone. It's not the greatest way to wake up in the morning. But what's important to understand, you have this problem with any package manager. Even if you put your files directly in your plugin, you still have this problem. Composer is simply the, the, the most commonly used dependency manager. But what you all do, and what I did before I started using Composer, I just grabbed the library, downloaded it, put it in my files, and just included it. Composer is just an easier way to do that. This problem, the dependency, it is not a problem that happens with Composer only. So what's wrong? We got this black box on the table and it's up to us to start figuring out what's wrong. Two plugins affect each other, both containing that library. But what's wrong? Here you can see the version constraint of this package. They both require something within the major version one point. It can be 1.5, can be 1.6. Semantic versioning, as long as you make it backwards compatible, it can work with each other. So the solution that we guess, it'll install version 1.0.0 or 1.5.5, right? Sadly, that doesn't work this way in WordPress. You all know that from the WordPress.org repository or from a plugin update, you actually download a zip file. And that zip file has to contain all the files of your plugin. And that includes the vendor directory. So in this case, both plugins that had the conflict had a different version of that, de uh, that dependency bundled in their vendor directories as you can see here in one of them, which is actually from Barry. See here? No. Okay. <laughs> That's the only way you can do it, really, so no blame on him. Um, so one plugin bundles 1.1.0, which wasn't really released at that point, but that's not really the problem here. The other one uses the current stable, which is 1.0. Who can make a guess which one was used? Sorry. Yeah. Well, the race is on. Whoever includes a file in that library first wins. So, in this case, they started doing the includes, Barry's plugin and someone else's <coughs> plugin started doing their routines. Conveniently, WordPress does it alphabetically because that's probably the right way. Um, the other loader does a class exist check. So Barry's plugin had already used that class, and then the second plugin came in. It required it auto, its auto loader and found, hey, that WP update.php class 
I already have that. I don't, no longer need to include that file. So what happened, the version 1.0.0 was loaded and the, pl the plugin bundling 1.1.0 assumed that it had version 1.1.0. But in fact, the other version was loaded and we got an error. So now the fun stuff begins. What can we do to prevent this? This is obviously an issue that now composers gaining traction within the WordPress ecosystem. This will be really big in the future. You can prefix everything. This is an example. It might not be readable in the back, but I'll explain what it is. It is um, a directory called DI, which stands for Dependency Injection. And this is pretty much the uh, pimple library, which is not loaded via a composer. It is just added to this uh, repository, which is basically just bundling <coughs> it. But what Danny did, because this is Danny von Kota's plugin, he changed the namespace of the library. You can see he prefixed it with his own namespace. I like Danny because he, he requires PHP 5.3 and uses namespaces. But what he can do is he can make his own version of pimple. And he can make sure that he always calls for pimple in this namespace so he knows that he has the right version. Well, it works, sure. You should ask him if he likes it. I doubt it. Every update of Pimple, every time he needs to change something inside Pimple, he has to update all these files. Now, in the case of Pimple, that's only two files, so I think he'll live. But someone should seriously make a SAS for this, or at least a script, so you can just do it all at once. And just to stress on this, Composer was designed to solve this, but because WordPress doesn't support Composer at its core, this becomes a problem now. Now, how would a developer solve this? Well, the easy answer is just support Composer, right? You can manage your entire site via Composer, including WordPress core. That works, well, almost always. And the 1% is probably not related to Composer in any way, but what if you can't? You want to bundle something with your plugin, which is publicly public. There we go. Which is released on WordPress.org. Um, <laughs> what, what if you can't add your site to Composer? Well, in that case, you add Composer to your site, right? You can't do it in PHP 5.2, but that's a ship that's long gone. Um, what this does, it creates a master composer.json file. When you run this routine from this plugin that I'm building, it, it loops through all your plugins and sees if it has a composer.json file, which is the file where all the settings for composer live. Then it runs this nifty plugin that I almost made myself and then figured out, hey, someone else must have had this problem. And I was right. There is something that does this already. You run it through that, and it generates one composer.json file, which has all the dependencies of all your plugins inside it. You run it, you put it in WP content slash vendor, and you require that out of order. Done, right? Yep, in theory, that's correct. There are a couple quicks that I'm still working on. And in order to get this in WordPress core, can't say it. We have to require PHP 5.3 because Composer requires that. It is fairly resource intensive. Um, when Composer starts working, it requires a lot of, of computer power to actually calculate and check, see what versions it'll get. But it's the only proper solution. I mean, if we continue doing this, then someone will be making the, the most commonly used plugin updater for premium plugins, for example, is the one from Yoast. 
someone will stand up and make one that is so generic that you can use it in any plugin or in any theme. What if 25 of us will start using that? What if the entire audience here, so let's say it's 50 people, give or take, what if we all release a plugin and one of us bundles 1.5, the other bundles 2.4, the other bundles 3.5? And then whoever gets loaded the first, probably someone whose plugin starts with the letter A, um, that version will be used. And it, it disregards anything semantically versioned. It will just use that first version and you will get fatal errors. So until the day that we have a solution for this, that we can require PHP 5.3, that we can have something so resource intensive that we can run it on our web service, WordPress and Composer will remain in this love-hate relationship. Thank you. I will repeat the question. Please yeah. stand up and speak a little bit louder. I saw uh, last week that WordPress updated the requirements page, mentioning page page 5.6. Mm -hmm. Do you think that will make it easier for you? Yes. Um, the question was, WordPress recently changed the requirements page. What they did change, actually, was the recommended version of PHP. They haven't bumped the required version yet. So yes, this will spark people seeing this and saying, hey, I'm still running on PHP 5.2. Please, if you still use 5.2, contact your host this afternoon. Just do it. Um, yeah, people are usually not aware that they run PHP 5.2 because how many times a day do you check it or do you know it? Or nobody knows it really, who is not really technical. But um, yes, it'll help because now the, the suggested letter that you can write to your web post also says, hey, I want to use WordPress and it recommends PHP 5.6. Um, can I run it on your service? And yes, this will change. But until the day that WordPress bumps the actual requirement and you don't even have to break backwards compatibility with 5.2 yet, but as long as you leave the requirement on 5.2, then this will never be accepted in core, no. But yes, the, the, the change in the requirement page does change something, but it will take a lot of time still. Yeah. With the analysis of all the dependencies, mm -hmm. can you, uh, instead of picking the first one, pick the one with the highest version number? That's, um, the question is, can you, uh, in the analysis of the, uh, the compatible PHP packages that you find that Composer does, can you pick the one with the highest version number? Yes, you can. That's actually uh, what Composer does by default. It tries to find the highest version that is compatible with all the constraints that you define in your Composer.json. Um, that doesn't solve the problem, though, because if my plugin is tested for 1.0.0, and I bundle that version, then um, someone else who bundles 2.0 can still get loaded before my 1.0. That's a different major version, so you can't have those together in the same plugin install. But if they're backwards compatible, then 1.0 should work with 2.0. No, because that's a different major version. <laughs> no, because if you, if you change the first digit in a version number that is semantically versioned, then it's no longer backwards compatible. <coughs> if you release a new major version, WordPress, for the record, WordPress does not adhere to semantic versioning. WordPress is not semantic versioned in any way. WordPress philosophy is to be always backwards compatible. And that's why this PHP, oh, it's not no longer here. But that's why the PHP 5.2 version uh, is going to bite them in the butt sooner or later. But... Um, yeah, if you have, if you have like a plugin that requires 1.0 and the other one requires 2.0, then you will never find a matching version because Composer assumes that you stick to ver semantic versioning. So you, it will just show, sorry, I can't resolve this. Anyone else? So assuming in a sort of happy universe, 
you know, PHP 5.3 is required and mm -hmm. composers and core. Mm -hmm. That's great, right? And this is definitely a developer focused feature. At what point do you, do you feel like there's any kind of negative effect potentially on the, the sort of just the end user? Yes. Would it slow down perhaps? The question is, is there going to be a negative a negative effect really on the on the end users who are not technical at all. Yes, there will be. There will be versions that say you bundle something or you require something in your plugin that is 1.0 and uh, Akismet, for example, wants to have the same bundle but in a different major version. That means that an end user can't install your plugin and Akismet at the same time because the version constraints collide. What you can do in that case, though, is um, if you make it smart enough, then you can uh, make it suggest to install a Kismet in the previous major version that still required the same major version of the library that you require. But that also requires a change in philosophy when it comes to WordPress, because um, if you have been in the WordPress forums once and you can read a page without it says, saying update, 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 um, when people release a new major version, you'll never get fixes for the old version anymore. WordPress core does it now, but very, very few plugins do it. So if you want to be able to solve this, then it will require well, both a technical change and a philosophical change. Yeah. Do you think that the PHP version constraint is perhaps less of a reason why it's not in core? That maybe the user experience yep. is maybe more of a reason? Probably as well, yeah. PHP is, uh, WordPress doesn't want to be the guy who says, no, you can't use WordPress anymore because your host neglected to update in the past decade. Um, but um, yes, the, the, the user experience is also really important to WordPress. And I think we have the technology to solve that for them. It's not going to be as easy as my plugin makes it believe that it is because it's a lot more complicated than that. But um, Yes, at this point, if you just want to make sure that of, if you want to prevent errors like this and prevent major versions of, of a dependency colliding within a WordPress install, just say, well, sorry, you can't install a Kismet because you have that plugin. Um, that is definitely a no-go for WordPress because that is something they always want to uh, prevent. They might just make you update your, your dependency, though. Yeah. How does... How does Composer handles uh, versions outside of, in, I mean, in um, other frameworks, sorry. Mm -hmm. Let me rephrase that. How does Composer handle that? Is it the same behavior as in WordPress, or is it just because it's WordPress that's yeah. Composer? <laughs> um, the question is, how does Composer handle the, the version requirements, really, yes. for, uh, for all its contents? Because if you look at Symfony or Laravel or something, they all use Composer to make sure that they have a package that is up to date that has <coughs> versions that work with each other because they are in the same major range. Um, the difference is that WordPress is by no means designed as a developer's tool. If you look at frameworks, they have obviously you are a developer that uses that framework. Um, the reason why it works there because no server has to ever run Composer. You run Composer locally and then you upload your files or deploy it with whatever tool you use. Um, so what I am trying to do is use a developer's tool, but it's perfectly capable of running inside WordPress, technically. The, the question is, do we want to burden our end users with this problem? And in the other frameworks, it's the task for the developer to design a package that's capable of running with Symfony, I don't know what version you want. Right. So yeah, it's a, it's a change in, um, in perspective. You have on one side, you have the developers. one side, you have the end users. And Composer is somewhere in the middle that can solve the problem for both. But yeah, it's probably not going to happen this year. <laughs> Anyone else? There are, I think there are plans to make dependencies for plugins in WordPress. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I couldn't have said it any better. You're reinventing Composer. But uh, to repeat the question, there is uh, TGMPA. I don't know what the abbreviation stands for, but it's 
um, it's basically a tool that says, well, if you use this plugin, then you need to install that plugin as well. It's something that's used in a lot of Team Forest teams as well, that they require a plugin in actually uh, to have the team function. Um, what this does, yes, it is reinventing Composer because basically you only want components of that other plugin. Um, and it causes a lot of overhead, in my opinion, because you don't want that entire plugin. You just want the pieces of code that work with your plugin and coincidentally with the other plugin as well. So, um, yeah, the efforts that's being made in TGMPA is great for end users, but it's not going to solve this problem because you still can have. Like I said, this is not a composer problem. It's a problem of dependency management. You can still have plugin A requiring dependency 1.5, while plugin B requires 2.6. And since they are a major version apart, you can never bring them together. Does that make any sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah, I could imagine that well, I work with VCAPTCHA, and there's also different versions of the PHP library. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. In an ideal world, yes. But um, I believe it was Petya in the keynote who said that there are only 16, or was it 26, plugins that remove the Howdy word from the WordPress administration panel. So you can um, capture, I think, about 50 plugins at this point. So the WordPress ecosystem has grown to the size that it is today because everybody can make their own implementation. I don't think that we will ever end up at the point where there is one CAPTCHA plugin and one e-commerce plugin. If, if we can do that, yes, please, it will solve a lot of problems. But that's not going to happen. No. All right. Thank you.